where every fight matters, where your playoff life, your playoff future relies on getting a finish. We've got all your best bets, all your parlays, all your props. We got it all. Welcome to the DraftKings pre-show for PFL4. Let's go. The PFL is back for the second half of the 2021 regular season. Live from Atlantic City at Ocean Casino Resort, it's the push to the playoffs for the featherweights and lightweights. Bubba Jenkins, Clay Collard, and Brendan Lochnane all looking to clinch playoff spots tonight. Plus a massive MMA debut. Larissa Shields, the two-time Olympic gold medalist and greatest women's boxer on the planet. Tonight, she begins her quest to become a two-sport champion. Welcome to the PFL Pre-Fight Show, presented by DraftKings. And here's how the night will begin. Five fights on ESPN Plus. Big playoff implications on this card. Back-to-back -back PFL lightweight champion, Natan Schultz, faces a win-or-go-home scenario versus undefeated prospect Alexander Martinez take a look at the current odds. Schultz, a heavy favorite. And how about that? The newcomer, Armand Ospinov. The odds have shifted in his favor. The night will conclude with a simulcast on ESPN2 and ESPN+. Plus. As we mentioned, Clarissa Shields makes her MMA debut against Brittany Elkin. And in league action, Clay Collard coming off his huge upset of Anthony Pettis, now looking to clinch the number one seed in the lightweight division. There are the live odds for the final four fights of the night. Brendan Lochnane, the biggest favorite on the card. He'll take on a fellow winner from our first PFL event in Tyler Diamond. Welcome, everybody. I am Sean O'Connell, joined as always by the Hall of Famer, Randy Couture, and the MMA genius, Kenny Florian. We'll get you out to our betting gurus, Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker shortly, but first, Gentlemen, this is what the PFL format is all about. Regular season, playoffs, and a championship. Tonight is the last chance for many of the fighters in the featherweight and lightweight divisions to secure a playoff spot. Randy, what do you expect from league action tonight? Well, there's a lot of guys in a tough spot here. Win or go home scenarios for a bunch of our guys, including our two-time returning champions. So, gonna be a really interesting night. In these two divisions specifically, Kenny, the race is still wide open. Yeah, that's right. You know, in the PFL, the cool thing is every fight matters, but also the way that you win really matters. For a lot of these guys, just getting a win might not be enough. So I'm really curious to see what kind of strategy they have going out to their fight. Do they go out, try to win as quickly as possible in round one, or do they play conservative? One thing to note, Anthony Pettis versus Haush Manfio, as well as Lance Palmer versus Mavlid Haibulayev, have been rescheduled to June 25th. Both Pettis and Palmer are in win or go home scenarios, so you don't want to miss those fights. All right, let's talk about this highly anticipated MMA debut. Clarissa Shields, the quote, the greatest woman of all time. Tonight, she faces a jujitsu practitioner in Brittany Elkin. A tough matchup for a boxer in her very first MMA fight. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's a very tough matchup. You know, she has to learn the other skills, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, learn how to defend all of those things. And then on top of that, she has to adjust her striking. This is not a boxing fight. She has to adjust her striking for mixed martial arts. Her footwork, her range is all going to have to be on point against Brittany Elkin, who has much more experience than she does in mixed martial arts. And Randy, it's not often that a world champion boxer steps into a cage. You face this exact yeah. scenario with James Tony. What's Brittany Elkin looking at? Well, I think Brittany Elkin's asking herself the same questions I was asking myself about James Tony. How much real MMA skill has she been able to put in her tool belt going into this fight? The striking is different. There's kicking, there's elbows. The ground game is the key here. Can Brittany Elkin measure her distance, pick her opportunities to get in there, make that transition and take this Clarissa Shields boxer out of her strength. That's gonna be the real question tonight. Can she use the fence in that range effectively? Massive opportunity for Shields in her debut and for Elkin, but how are the experts betting this fight? That's what Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parkin are for. Take it away, fellas. <sighs> Oh, Sean, thank you very much. We've got to have the best of both worlds tonight. We have great regular season matchups that lead to the playoffs, but that's not what Clarissa Shields is a part of. This is a feature bout. It's a huge MMA debut. But, Ian, 
when you do this every single week like we do, when you see massive line movement like minus 600 to open all the way down to minus 250 now at DraftKings, what does that tell you? Looks like there's some money coming in on Elkin. People believe that she'll be able to use her jujitsu and force Shields into her uh, not so much a comfort zone in jujitsu. Let's see how that goes. Well, you know, when you talk about hype, there's a lot of hype surrounding Clarissa Shields, but the big question is why? Why so much hype? Let's show everybody exactly what her resume looks like. She's a two-time Olympic boxing gold medalist in 2012 and 2016. She's a three-division boxing world champion. She has an undefeated, unblemished record of 11-0. But she wants to do both now at the same time. She's going to box and do MMA. So it's a very unique spot, Ian. Main event, MMA debut, how do you handicap it? Well, like you said, Coach, her MMA debut, it's a little tough to take those odds at over minus 200. So we're going to shrink it down to size, and we're going to go into the prop world. We're going to take Clarissa Shields by TKO or KO at minus 125. Her opponent has zero submission wins. So, yes, she may be a grappler, but hasn't got it done there yet. I think Clarissa's been working on her takedown defense, forcing the fight standing, and I think she gets it done with her hands. This is one of the most unique bets that we've ever seen in MMA, and I'm excited to see how it plays out later tonight. Now, Sean, a little bit later right here on the show, we've got Parker's Parlay pre presented by DraftKings. We've got an underdog pick. We've got it all. But for right now, let's send it back cage side to you. Thank you, Coach and Ian. All right. A win is a successful MMA debut, but a win by knockout or TKO, as Ian Parker is telling us to bet on, that's a bigger statement. It is, you know, it's not out of the question. I mean, she is a world champion boxer. She's gonna be throwing those four ounce gloves. She has a tremendous left hook. I, I don't wanna get hit by that left hook. Uh, so I definitely think she has the ability uh, to knock her out. But again, she has to keep it on the feet here against Elkin. Randy, that's the last fight on a huge ESPN2 card. Clarissa Shields, she's not even the biggest finisher in her boxing career. Do you see it going that way tonight? Yeah, I think 11 finished, I mean, 11 wins, but only two of those have come by finish. So I think that's a tall order, honestly. I think uh, the, the range and distance is going to be interesting. Uh, can she stop those takedowns or stop, stay out of that clinch uh, and keep her right out there at range where she wants her? That's the real question. As big as an opportunity as it is for Clarissa Shields to debut in MMA, I think this is just as big an opportunity for Brittany Elkin. That's a huge showcase main event to cap off things on ESPN2 and ESPN+. Plus. But how about the playoff implications on the line for the featherweights and the lightweights? Brendan Lochnane, Bubba Jenkins, Clay Collard, all looking for a top seed, and you can see the live odds there. Brendan Lochnane is a prohibitive betting favorite. He's right now the hottest guy in this featherweight division. With that, we take a look at our featherweight standings. Brendan Lochnane, the only man on our first PFL show of the season to score a first round finish. That's why he's got six points. That's why there's so much hype behind the lone Brit on the roster. What about at 155 pounds? Clay Collar had six points, but that's because he scored a decision victory in the upset over Anthony Pettis, and then his opponent later tonight missed weight. So he gets three automatic points and a walkover victory. But for Clay Collar, not enough. He wants bonus points. He wants a chance to be the number one seed in the lightweight division. Randy, give me a fight to watch coming up on ESPN. Well, I'm excited about that fight, Clay Collard and, and Luderbach. You know, Collard coming out with six Here boxing is. victories while the rest Action. of the world was on lockdown. Derailed a bunch of top ranked boxers. And now he's come back to MMA. He's a well-rounded fighter. He's not just good on, with his hands, he's good on the ground. Great precision striking. We saw him do everything against Anthony Pettis. Luderbach is no slouch, Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner, long-rangey kid, and he's unorthodox. Sometimes those unorthodox kicks and punches come from places we don't expect them, and that's going to be something for Collard to deal with. That is a great fight. Kenny, which one's your favorite coming up later? For me, I, I can't wait for the Brendan Lochnane and Tyler Diamond fight. You know, not only have these guys been talking trash to each other, but just the way that they fight, I think it's going to deliver a very exciting fight. I'd be surprised if it goes the distance. You see Lochnane right there finishing Shaman Moraes. That was in round one, a tremendous striker. And Tyler Diamond was able to come back from the dead, essentially, almost got knocked out, showed how tough he is, came back and delivered a very very exciting win, so can't wait for that one. Couple of phenomenal fights to watch, but how are Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker 
betting the ESPN2 car. Shot, as much as we want to entertain everybody, it's also very important to educate everybody. And when you look at the numbers that you guys just showed, the numbers are just way too high, and upsets do happen. So how do you bring those numbers down so if you do suffer a loss, it's not as painful as minus 400? Ian, I know there's three fights on the card outside of Clarissa Shields. Wrap them up for me and tell me what you like. Let's start off with Brendan Lochtein over Tyler Diamond. Look, this guy's got the momentum out of anyone in the entire league. His striking, he's got underrated takedown defense, and he actually has really good wrestling and cardio. I think Lochtein gets it done with his strikes yet again. Bubba Jenkins, performance of a lifetime against Lance Palmer. The momentum keeps going. He'll have the wrestling advantage, and his striking has gotten a lot better, too. I like him in this fight as well. And to anchor our parlay, Clay Collard. That strike against Anthony Pettis was nothing short of phenomenal. Also, underrated ground game. I think that Luderbox striking, his chin's too high. I think Collard gets it done, and that parlay will get us at plus 154 odds. I'm going with that one, Coach. I love that plus money. I also love the fact that Collard decided he wanted to go out and fight get the bonus points, but all we need to do is have him win in our parlay, and that helps us cash. Now, still to come, we've got Parker's picks, we've got underdogs, and believe me, underdogs can cash in the PFL. But right now, let's go back cage side to Sean. Thank you, Coach and Ian. All right, part of that parlay was a guy we haven't talked about, which means we haven't talked enough about <laughs> Bubba Jenkins coming off the biggest win of his mixed martial arts career. He took out Lance Palmer in his PFL debut. He's a favorite tonight. You expect it to go that way? You know, not only did he defeat Lance Palmer, but he established himself as the best wrestler in the division. And you know what? Uh, as good as Lance Palmer is, there was not a point where he was really winning that fight. I thought that Bubba Jenkins really cruised to victory, kind of made it look easy. He didn't get that second round knockout he was talking about, <laughs> but he dominated with his wrestling. And when you have that kind of control, when you have that ability to close the distance, that's got to make him one of the favorites in that division. And Randy, if you're Bobby Moffitt making your PFL debut, you got to go up against that guy, yeah, Bubba Jenkins? Yeah, that's a tall order for anybody coming in. It's been, and Moffitt's looking at that going, man, how did I draw this straw? But uh, Jenkins is obviously an NCAA champion. That's a very elite group of guys for Arizona State. He did a great job, like you said, Kenny, against Palmer, controlling everywhere that fight went. He rode him like a wet blanket. Yeah. And I expect him to come out and do the same thing again tonight. All right, so those fights we just talked about, you'll see on ESPN2, but the night starts 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Five fights, all with playoff implications on the line, and there are the live odds right now. Natan Schultz coming off a loss, but a two-time lightweight champion here in Professional Fighters League. He's a big-time favorite over an undefeated prospect. And how about Armand Ospinov? The newcomer out of Kazakhstan, the winds are blowing in his direction. He has somehow become a favorite over Chris Wade, who's already been in the PFL playoffs twice. Randy, give me a fight to watch on Plus. Man, uh, I'm going to go with uh, Schult and Martinez. I, I you like know, it. Schult is under the gun. It's a winner go home scenario for him. He's literally been flawless in two seasons. It's going to be amazing to see how he deals with this pressure. Martinez is no slouch, he's well-rounded. The, the Frenchman does a great job in every position, but he's gonna have his hands full. We know what Schultz does, plots forward, great hand. He's gonna just keep coming. Get too close to him, he's gonna grab a hold of you, use that judo and throw you on the ground and make it even more difficult for you. I don't know, I, I like Schulte in this one, but it's gonna be a great fight. All right, Kenny Florian, I gotta ask you the same question. Five great fights, but which one jumps out for you? Well, I, I like the Canadian and the Polish fighter going at it. OAM taking on Marcin Held, and Held known for his leg lock submission ability, but went out there and outstruck Natan Schultz for two rounds and uh, really showed he's been working on that game, had excellent speed and combinations, but he's taken on another excellent grappler in OAM. You see George St. Pierre there in the background. They are buddies and have been training together. Uh, and he's also developed uh, an excellent striking game as well. All right. As I promised, five amazing fights to open the night. How do we bet them? Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker let us know. Yeah, Sean, there's several different ways to bring a number down. We just talked about putting in a parlay, but some people may not want to have to win two or three fights. So prop bets are very important, but it's about being specific in a specific way that a fight is going to end. 
that's why it's important, but it also brings a number way down, something we can bet with. Now, it's time for Parker's Prop Bets presented by our good friends at DraftKings. Ian, give me three that you like that are numbers that we can play with. Go ahead. We're going to start off with Clarissa Shields. I like her at minus 125 or minus 130 by knockout or KO. She keeps the fight standing, and she makes a statement in her MMA debut. We're going to go with Olivier Aubier Mercier, OAM. Not only is he an underdog, but his grinding style, his improved striking, as long as he can stay away from those leg locks, I think he gets the upset at that plus 200 or more to win by decision. Last but not least, Ahmed Aliyev. I believe he gets the, the win by decision. He's got to go in there. He's got to grind this out, and that's exactly what he's going to do. You know, Ian, that U word was a swear word at PFL 1 because so many underdogs hit, which, quite frankly, we didn't want that that particular night. But it happened, and it happens in MMA. How much did it happen? Let's show everybody exactly who got the job done at Plus Money at PFL 1. This was all in one night. Clay Collard, plus 400. Thank you. Marcin Health, plus 320. Really? Jenkins, plus 285. 285 for Martinez. And then from Anthio, <laughs> plus 200. Now, in MMA, anything can happen. We've already talked about OAM, and he has plus money. But I know there's another guy on the card that you think could get the job done here in just a little bit. I do. I believe it's Chris Wade. His opponent's coming in with negative points already, so you know he's going to come out really fast, throwing strikes, looking for the knockout. Chris Wade's a phenomenal wrestler. He showed in his last fight, although he started off a little slow, the cardio was there. His striking has improved. I think Wade is the money to play as an underdog. Absolutely no question about it. He grinds his way, gets a decision, and gets the win. Be sure to follow Ian Parker, Ian Parker MMA on social media all night. We'll be talking about these fights, but we've done best bets. We've done parlays. We've done props. We've done underdogs. We're set. We're going to sit back and take every ticket where you know where, straight to the pay window. Shot, back to you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Ian, for breaking down the bets all across the card for us. And, fellas, far be it for me to go against the duck, okay? <laughs> But what does Marcin Held have to do to get a little <laughs> respect around here? He knocked off Natan Schulte. I know, debut. right? A two-time champ, and he made it look easy. He just waded through him through great combinations. Uh, I like OAM, and he says TriStar is a place that focuses on leg locks, too, which yeah. may negotiate or negate some of that leg lock submission of the pole. But, uh, man, what has he got to do? He's going to need no love tonight. On top of the TriStar training, he actually spent some time with the Danaher Death Squad. That's right. And that was a leg lock camp. It, that's, those are the best leg lockers in the world right now. So absolutely, he's doing all the right things. So perhaps that's what Ian's looking at. But Marcin Held, you kind of being treated like the Rodney Dangerfield of mixed <laughs> martial arts. Ian, what's going on? All right. We've been talking about bets all night. What if you want to play? Well, tonight only, ahead of Clarissa Shields' MMA debut, fans can play in a free PFL pool on DraftKings for a shot at $5,000 in prizes. Just download the DraftKings app, sign up with promo code PFL, and submit your picks to compete for five grand in prizes. Let's take one last look at the fight cards. Starting at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Plus, those five bangers, I promise all of these are going to deliver action. This is gonna be incredible. One last look at those odds. If you're looking to make a play, Natan Schultz still a big heavy favorite. How about Shama Marais? We did talk about that. Yeah. He's a pretty heavy favorite that should be on a our good ESPN fight. Plus card as he takes on a newcomer in Jesse Stern. The ESPN2 card will also be simulcast on ESPN Plus for those of you who stay in the streaming world. Four fantastic bouts and potential number one spots in the playoffs coming up. Brendan Lochnane, Bubba Jenkins, Clay Collard, Clarissa Shields, all big time favorites. Playoff spots, including number one spots, potentially on the line. Clarissa Shields makes her MMA debut tonight. We will see you shortly, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Plus. Professional Fighters League action.